your ammonia's at zero, and your nitrites are at zero, now what? Bonjour everybody, Matthew here, your BRS beginner guru. Coming at you with episode 23 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks. Eight steps to complete when the nitrogen cycle is done. If you missed episodes 1 through 22, we will put a link to the entire playlist below. Let's get started with a quick review and to answer the question, how do you know when the nitrogen cycle is complete? Okay, if you want a super complete answer to that question, check out this video, which is actually episode 18 in our series. We spent the entire video talking about the nitrogen cycle. We'll also link it below. So how do you know when the nitrogen cycle is complete? Well, first your ammonia levels are gonna go up and up and up and then come back down to zero. And during that time, your nitrate levels will do the same. They will go up and up and up and then they will return to zero. Once your nitrite levels return back to zero, your cycle is complete. Now, you might be wondering, what about my nitrate levels? Shouldn't they also return to zero? No, your cycle is done when the nitrite levels are zero. You will still have nitrates in your tank, but we'll talk about how to get rid of those shortly. Step one, cleanup. Now that the cycle is complete, let's get our hands dirty and get that tank clean because we're about to perform a massive water change. So go ahead and start with scraping all of your glass using your algae scraper. And if you followed our advice and left out your mechanical filtration, either your sponge or your filter sock, now's a good time to put those back in to capture all of that floating debris. It's also a really good time to clean off your rock work. So go ahead and grab a turkey baster and gently blast off your reef rock. Step two, perform a big water change. With all of that gunk floating around your aquarium, it's a perfect time to do a water change. So go ahead and gather all of your five gallon buckets or if you use a brute trash can, get that gravel vacuum and perform a somewhat large water change. I would say anywhere from 25 to 50%. Doing a large water change at this point is really beneficial for removing nitrates, removing detritus that's floating around or that's gathered at the bottom of your tank. And it's also a good opportunity to replenish the major, minor, and trace elements before you add your first livestock. Step three is start adding livestock. Slowly though, okay? Do it slow. Okay, I get it. Now that your tank is fully cycled, you have been patient up to this point. It's so tempting to go out and buy tons of fish and corals and other inverts and just pack your tank to the brim with livestock. But I urge you and I beg you, resist that temptation. The first thing I want you to do right now, if you haven't done it yet, go set up a quarantine tank. Don't be one of those beginners that thinks, oh, I don't need a quarantine tank, I'll get lucky, it'll be fine. Be one of those beginners that sets themselves up for success right now. If you don't know how to set up a quarantine tank, we'll put links below, but you can also just stick with this series because we're gonna spend an entire video down the line on how to set up a quarantine tank. So you may be wondering, why are we urging patience when adding livestock, and then how many pieces of livestock, how many fish can you add at once? So while it's true that your tank is cycled, when you add livestock, you will likely have a second mini cycle. And you might be wondering, wait, why would that be? The cycle's already done. Well, think about it like this. Your cycle can only be as robust as the bio load that's in your tank. And during your cycle, you may have just added ammonia chloride or thrown in a piece of shrimp or just fed your tank daily. That's not a very big bio load. So as soon as you start adding livestock, you are increasing the feedings and you are increasing how much poop is coming out of those fish, which means there's gonna be more decaying matter. And more decaying matter is gonna turn into ammonia, which means you need more beneficial bacteria than you previously had to consume all of that new ammonia. So we're urging you to go slowly because when you add new fish, you're increasing that bio load, which means you need to give your beneficial bacteria time to catch up and multiply to be able to complete the cycle again. If you go slowly, your second cycle is not gonna be anything drastic, but you will definitely notice your ammonia and your nitrite creep up again, and we wanna make sure we keep those levels low enough so it doesn't stress out or kill your fish. So how many fish would we recommend adding? If you have a small tank, let's say somewhere between 10 and 30 gallons, we'd recommend adding somewhere between two and four fish. And choose fish that are really, really hardy, that are known to acclimate well and be good for new tanks. Things like damsels or clownfish, although honestly, I have found clownfish to be the absolute best at doing this. If you have a larger system, 50 gallons and up, obviously you can scale up how much livestock you're adding accordingly. 
Be sure to test your water frequently during this time, especially for ammonia and nitrite. Hopefully your beneficial bacteria will be able to keep up with the increased bio load, but if you start to notice your ammonia levels creep above 0.25, it's time to take action and perform a large water change to bring those level down to a safe number. We definitely recommend waiting to add corals until a later date, so wait until that second mini cycle is done and the tank is stabilized before considering adding corals. Step four, turn on those lights. If you've followed our advice, you probably left your lights off up until this point to not encourage nuisance algae growth. So does this mean that when you turn the lights on, you're gonna start seeing algae growing all over your tank? Yes, absolutely. But not to worry because we're gonna be adding a cleanup crew in a future video that will help manage the algae explosion that's about to occur in your tank. And I know you probably have a ton of questions about reef tank lighting, so stay tuned for episodes 25, 26, and 27 because we will go into extreme detail shortly. Step five is to mentally prepare yourself for diatoms. They're coming. If they're not there yet, they're on their way. And they're about to make your tank look ugly. No joke, they're real. Okay, seriously though, there's no need to panic. Your tank's gonna get ugly and that's totally normal. Diatoms come into every single tank, especially since you've increased the amount of livestock and you've turned your lights on, you have just fueled the algae craze that's about to overtake your tank. It's gonna take a while for that tank to settle in and sometimes diatoms can come and go for months at a time. Honestly, I've had tanks that have been established for a year and all of a sudden I get a little diatom outbreak. But not to worry, there are things we're gonna do shortly. First of all, you're gonna to have to increase your maintenance schedule, just clean your glass a little bit more, maybe gravel back that sand bed a little bit more, and then shortly we're gonna be adding some cleanup crew members, which will help keep that clean without having to get your hands in the tank. So step six, guess what it is? Guess what it is? It's time to add a small cleanup crew. If you add too many members of a cleanup crew at the very beginning, there's probably not gonna be enough food for them all to survive you can always add more later. So if you notice that you add a small cleanup crew and they're just not being able to keep up with the workload, you can add more at a later time. We're gonna spend an entire video discussing cleanup crews very shortly in this series, but if you can't wait, Ryan made a fantastic video all the way back in 2015 all about cleanup crews. Check it out, it's really good. We'll put links to it below. But without going into too much detail, if you're curious to know what cleanup crews we add to our tanks at the beginning, it usually consists of a few snails and a few hermit crabs. There's two different kinds of snails out there, ones that eat algae and then ones that burrow through your sand bed and eat detritus. And then for hermit crabs, we usually like to add five or so of the really small hermit crabs, the red or the blue legged. If you add in some algae eaters and some detritivores, you'll probably have your bases covered starting out. Step number seven, it's time to learn some serious patience things are going to go wrong. You're gonna have fish get sick, you're gonna have inverts die, you'll probably have some sort of uncontrollable nuisance algae outbreak that will make you wanna tear your hair out. Take every failure as a learning opportunity. But too many hobbyists quit during their first year because they experience failure. But think about it. They say that when learning a new skill, it takes 10,000 hours of practice to master it. So why should any beginner think that they are going to be a reef tank master on their first go? It's just not gonna happen. The only way you're gonna fail in this hobby is if you quit. And trust me, there are going to be days when you want to quit. But if you can admit that you failed, then you can pick yourself back up, learn something, and come back to the hobby even stronger. I have failed in this hobby more than I have succeeded. I have cracked and destroyed brand new tanks, I have crashed tanks, and I have walked away from tanks. Don't make rash decisions. If you notice a problem and you don't know what to do, reach out to a fellow hobbyist, reach out to your local reef club, check out the forums, or call BRS customer service because we are all here to help you succeed in this hobby. And we've arrived at our last step, step eight, establish a maintenance and testing regimen. The time to start good saltwater aquarium habits is now. Commit yourself to doing a 10% water change every single week and to testing your water parameters every single week. Weekly water changes will help remove unwanted things from your tank while adding back in your major, minor, and trace elements. It's also a really good time to algae scrape your glass and to gravel vacuum your sand bed. And not only that, but it really gives you good contact time with your tank so you can notice things before they turn into problems. 
As you get to know your tank more, you're gonna realize that there are things that you need to test every week and then things that you probably don't need to test. For example, I usually test for ammonia and nitrite when I'm starting out new tanks, but I almost never test them in established tanks. Other tanks, I test nitrate and phosphate every week, but I don't worry about calcium and alkalinity because there aren't any corals in the tank. So figure out what testing regimen works well for you and maybe start out testing a bit more than you need to until you really get a good sense of your tank and then you can cut back as you go. Well, that just about wraps up episode 20, 22, 23, 23. Stick with us because we still have over 20 episodes more in this series. Do you remember step two of this video, water changes? Stay tuned because next week, episode 24 is all about water changes and four methods for starting a siphon. Well, everybody, as always, thank you for watching. Happy reefing, be well, and we'll see you next time.